Is Seattle a good place to live? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, so stay tuned. As always, I'm Bryce Greenleaf, local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area. I love helping you guys out, those of you that reach out to me here from YouTube when you're making the move over here. So if that sounds like you relocating to this area or maybe you already live here and you're looking to purchase a home, feel free to reach out to me, I'd be happy to help. But this video specifically is, this topic is, is Seattle a good place to live? Now, this is one of the most polarizing places in the country. You'll hear people on both sides of the extreme, some saying I absolutely hate Seattle and some saying I absolutely love Seattle. In fact, a recent study showed that Seattle proper specifically fell within the top 10 most desirable places to live at number two. It also fell within the top 10 least desirable places to live at number seven. So you're gonna get people on both sides saying that they absolutely love it or they absolutely hate it. So let's dive into the Seattle area specifically what it has to offer and why certain people might feel that way and give you an idea if this might be the best place or the right place for you to move to. All right, so when we're talking about this area, we're gonna talk about Seattle proper, downtown Seattle, living in the city and the Seattle Metro, the Seattle suburbs. Now, most people that contact me here from YouTube are specifically focusing on living in the Seattle suburbs. Some of you, yes, wanna be in Seattle proper, but a lot of you are looking at Seattle suburbs. So we're gonna take a look at this question through the lens of the entire Seattle metropolitan area. I've got seven of the most important categories that people look at that really make up the livability of a city that we're gonna dive into. All right, so the first category here we're gonna look at is the home prices. Now, yes, of course, home prices here in Seattle are gonna be much higher than the national average. We are a coastal city with a robust job market and just beautiful scenery and recreation, all things to do around here. So we're gonna dive into all of that on this video. But the home prices are gonna be higher than average. In Seattle, the median home price currently is is 950,000, that is Seattle proper. The metropolitan area as a whole, the median home price is 798,000. Now you can find cities in Seattle metropolitan where, you know, like Bellevue, where the median home price in Bellevue is 1.8 million. Or you can go to the opposite end of that spectrum. You can find cities like Tacoma where the median home price is closer to 500,000 and everything in between. So there are different options to fit your specific needs and what you really need need to be looking for it when it comes to that price point. But as you know, this is not the South, this is not the Midwest where homes are super cheap. There's a reason they are expensive here. All right, let's talk about the climate and the weather. A lot of you have probably heard that Seattle is one of the rainiest places that you can live and it's always gray and overcast and wet. Yes, part of this is absolutely true. Now being one of the rainiest places is a, a correct and incorrect statement. Yes, we have some of the, the most amount of rainy days, top 10 in terms, terms of cities with the most amount of rainy days in the US. When it comes to annual rainfall, we're nowhere near the top 10 for the amount of rain that we receive. The reason for that is because here in Seattle, it's very drizzly, misty, light rain that you're gonna get a lot of the time and you're just gonna get more days of that. However, one thing that attracts people to this area to move over here is because of the mild climate. A recent study that took data from 1991 to 2020 recently ranked Seattle as the sixth most mild climate in the US. This is with 100 146 days between the temperatures of 60 and 80 degrees for the daily highs. Now, when you're here in Seattle, very rarely do you get extreme temperatures. In the summer, it's typically around the mid 70s to 80 degrees for the most part, June, July, and August. In the winter, the coldest months of the year, it's typically in the high 30s to high 40s. The average daily highs for the winter months are like 44, 45, 46 degrees. Very rarely in the winter, Winter, are you gonna get you know into the low 20s or teens and get pounded with snow we don't get that much snow over here and in the summers very rarely are you gonna get into triple digit temperatures like a lot of other states do that is very very rare here in the Seattle area there might be some stretches during the summer where you get a three to four uh, day period maybe once or twice in the summer where temperatures are gonna get over 90 um, but it is not an issue that you suffer with all summer long with not being able to enjoy the outdoors 
$10 because it's too hot. It's usually absolutely perfect here in the summer. Now the flip side to having the mild climate is yes, you're gonna have those more uh, gray, a lot of gray overcast days. USA Today ranked the Seattle area as the 23rd least sunshiny area in the US. So the trade off of not having those extreme temperatures is you're just gonna have more overcast and cloudy days through the year. All right, category number three here is taxes. Now this is one that a lot of people specifically coming from California is, is a big consideration and a big, big weighing factor for them to come up here. We do not have state income tax here in Washington. So if you're coming over here from a place like California, you might be saving 10 to 13% of your salary just by not having state income tax. So that makes a huge, huge impact. All right, category number four is the traffic. People constantly complain about traffic over here. Again, we are a coastal city. It is going to be bad traffic. So you need to know that coming into this. Here in Seattle, specifically Seattle proper, we are landlocked. You've got the Puget Sound on the west side. You've got the Cascade Mountain Ranges on the east side and in between you have lakes all over the place. So there's only so much room for roadways to go in. This isn't Texas or any of these places down south where they just have this massive grid of different roadways and highways and freeways. There's only so much space around here to put those in. So traffic does get very gridlocked. When you're moving over here, you need to consider if you're working in a specific location and you're not working remote, you need to consider what that actual commute time will be, not just the distance in my mileage because you might be a little bit surprised on how long that's actually going to take you. A recent study shows that Seattle is the 21st worst city for traffic in the U.S. This is with 46 hours lost per year on sitting in traffic. I was actually surprised to see this, to see us that far down the list at 21. Um, I think it's worse than that. I don't I don't think there's 20 cities that have worse traffic than Seattle. Maybe there is according to their data, um, but I would expect that to be a little bit higher. Chicago was number one with 155 hours lost. So that's a huge difference between Chicago and Seattle. I would think that number is closer though. I've never spent time in Chicago, never been there. So what do I know? Um, but just be prepared over here. Traffic is going to be difficult. All right, the fifth category here is outdoor recreation. Now there's very few places in the country that are better for outdoor recreation than the Pacific Northwest. U.S. News recently ranked Seattle proper specifically as the number eight best city in the U.S. when it comes to the park systems. Over 99% of residents in Seattle proper are within a 10 minute walk to a park. Niche recently ranked Seattle as the number one best city when it comes to outdoor recreation. Now a big reason why people are attracted to this area is because of how much there is to do outdoors. I mentioned we have the Puget sound on the west of us so you can take advantage of the beaches and the kind of the just the beachside towns with cool downtown areas you can go on a ferry ride for a day trip take out a, a kayak go out on a boat go crabbing all sorts of stuff you can do on the Puget Sound as we move further inland we have lakes everywhere so if you want to go swimming you want to take your kids out there where they can go swimming you want to go fishing you want to go on a paddleboard a kayak want to take the boat or jet skis out go wakeboarding or water skiing any of that kind of stuff there's lakes all over the place as we move further east we have the cascade mountain range so no matter where you live in the seattle metropolitan area you are going to be within a relatively easy distance and commute to get to a mountain range to go uh, skiing and snowboarding uh, snowshoeing all of that kind of stuff mountain biking outside of just the cascade mountain range there's other a lot of other areas very very close by to a lot of these neighborhoods with trails and great hiking opportunities all over the place. So hiking is easily accessible. You don't necessarily have to go all the way to the Cascade Mountain Range, where, though you certainly can, um, but there is hiking and mountain biking opportunities all over the place. So this is one of the best areas you can be in the country when it comes to the outdoor recreation. All right, category number six is jobs. Now this is another reason why a lot of people relocate over here is because they get a job offer in the Seattle area. We are a tech hub outside of Silicon Valley. We're one of the largest tech hubs in this area. We have Amazon, Microsoft, Google, um, GoDaddy, TikTok. Um, I'm missing some obvious ones. Facebook is here. Apple is here. All of the big tech companies are here in the Seattle area, as well as a lot of other smaller companies as well. There's great finance jobs. There's great healthcare jobs. There's all sorts of different types of great jobs in the Seattle area. Wallet Hub recently evaluated cities with the best opportunities, growth, and 
and salary, and they ranked Seattle as the seventh best city in the US when it comes to jobs. Bankrate looked into these numbers and they ranked the Seattle area as a whole as the number two best place in the country to start a career. For opportunity, Seattle was ranked number one in the country and for quality of life, ranked number four. So there's just a lot of opportunity around here for jobs in different sectors and that's a huge, huge, huge reason why some people are relocating over here. All right, and the last category on my list here I'm gonna go over is the schools. US News recently ranked the metro areas, the top 30 metro areas with the best public high schools in the country and Seattle Metro was one of the places on that list. Seattle Metro has 114 ranked schools and 44 of those schools in the top 25%. Now it depends where in the Seattle metropolitan area you are. A lot of different uh, cities and suburbs and general areas are gonna have a lot better schools than others. So you gotta research those specific areas. Seattle Metro is a, is a very large area. We have over 4 million in population. There's over 70 different city, suburbs, towns in what's considered Seattle metropolitan, a lot of different school districts. So you need to, you need to study if, if this is something important to you and you have kids, this is uh, something you need to look into specifically within those areas that you're looking to purchase a home. All right, so this wraps up the major categories that people consider when they're moving over to an area. Now, we talked about how polarizing Seattle is and how so many people just seem to hate this area and how so many people just seem to love this area. Now, I'll just let you know, two, there's really two uh, of the biggest reasons why I see people leaving the Seattle area and why they say they really don't like it. Number one is the political climate. Yes, Seattle, as you know, when you're a coastal city, it's it's much more liberal left leaning. Uh, as you get into Seattle proper, it is much more that way. It's you know, more and more extreme as you get closer to Seattle proper. Now, what I have found is a lot of the suburbs are very moderate. They're gonna fit right in the middle. There's a lot of people that come over here and they're not leaning one way or the other super extremely. They're somewhere closer to the middle and they find that a lot of these suburbs are that way. But the Seattle metropolitan area as a whole gets a rep from some people that it's very, very, very far left leaning. While some of that is true in Seattle proper, it's not really true in the suburbs. There's a wide mix of everybody. The number two big reason why I see people leaving this area is because because of that cost of living and those home prices. Not everybody has a job where they can afford to buy a million dollar home. And so that's certainly understandable why they decide to relocate somewhere else outside of Seattle so they can afford to buy a home. So that's something to consider is based on, you know, what job you have, what job you're taking, if that's a route that you wanna go and home ownership is a goal of yours, you need to evaluate if that's something that to financially you'll be able to pull off in the cities that you like. The city that you like might have a median home price of 900,000 to a million. That's very common for people moving over here to kind of gear towards those cities that are 900 to 1.1, 1.2 million because they have a good combination of commutable to one of these high paying jobs a couple of days a week if they're semi remote uh, in a good school district in a city that has a lot to do and, and is very friendly area and just checks a lot of boxes for people. And that's what I see most common that price point that people land in. So that's something you need to evaluate. If that's a goal of yours, and seeing if that job is available financially where you could pull that off. All right, well, that wraps it up here. Hopefully this was informative to you and help you make your decision on if living over here is the right move for you. Like I said, I'm an active real estate agent in this area. So if you need help when you come over here and you're looking to find that right place, that right area to live, and you're looking to buy a home, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching.